Easy people, hope everyone's doing okay. Today's video, we shall be examining the parliamentary building here in Budapest. It is one of the most iconic buildings throughout Europe. Really an impressive structure to say the least. And today's video, I'm just gonna speak a little bit about the building, bring your attention to some of the details and leave it at that. If you wish to explore the subject further, then you could go to my other YouTube channel, Electric Realm. Some background information as we walk along the River Danube here with the impressive shoreline. Glorious city Budapest is, it really is. So the construction of the building began in 1885, was completed by 1902. An estimated 100,000 workers were used to complete the project. Um, it had 40 million bricks half a tonne of precious stones and 40 kilograms of gold used to complete a building that is used for parliament. That's not bad, huh? And that right there is the parliamentary building of Budapest. Let's get the obvious out of the way. It's an absolute gem. Majestic, grand, imposing, impressive, all words that could be used to associate with such an impressive building. But, and it's a big but, it's a little over the top to be built, to be used just for Parliament, do you not think? Perhaps this building has an ulterior purpose and was used for different things. So let's go and take a look. One of the first things that you really notice is the spires and the dome. They are incredibly impressive. And it's just the sheer volume of them. There are spires of all, si all shapes and sizes, sorry. And if you even notice the smaller ones, that are running just along the edges here, all the way around. Also, this is the foundation level that we can see here. As that level just above, that is the ground level on the other side. So we know that it has deep foundations and we know that it goes down far as we'll get to later on. So there you can see the copper spires. And they have these barbed points on with an orb at the top of the spire. And as you just start to come down the building, you notice all of the small horseshoe style magnets that are like arches. These run all the way around the building in all different shapes and sizes. Doesn't matter where you look, you can see different style horseshoe magnets. And just above the horseshoe style magnets, just here, these oscillation geometric patterns that are running there. Now this geometric pattern can be used for oscillation, which assists the movement of electrons, which again is part of the process of free energy, electromagnetic energy. This is actually the biggest building in Budapest, even still to this day. And even today, with all of the magnificent machinery, tools that we have at our disposal, power, all of these things. We do not replicate buildings of this magnitude. The oscillation geometric patterns that I was referring to earlier. Look how many there are. All in alignment. Really, is there any reason to build a level of detail as that? if it doesn't serve any purpose. Everywhere you look, you find more and more details. We also have them on the dome. As you notice, big ones, huge ones that are running around the dome. Horseshoe style magnets just above it and spires, smaller spires with an incredible amount of detail running the entire perimeter of the dome. And then we get to the spire on top of the dome. Looks like a cast iron one. Uh, you see plenty of copper on these type of buildings, as you can see just one there in the distance, the copper dome. And the reason for that, even just there as well, look. The reason for copper and iron are they are both excellent conductors of electricity. And it is my opinion that these buildings were harnessing electromagnetic free energy. Two spires just to the left of the dome, they are copper. You can still see the greeny blue turquoise colour that it leaves. 
So we've left the basement level that we were just at to come up to the ground level this side. First thing, it isn't the building itself, the lamppost, two of them to be in fact. These are old world lampposts. We see all of this detail, Antiquitec. Again, smaller spires running around the lamppost. It's a lot of detail just to go in for a light. And this is because, again, my opinion, that even the lampposts were harnessing this magnetic energy field. There's a lot of detail that we need to go into. It cannot be explained in a short video. This video, we're purely bringing attention to the building itself. As I said earlier, you can go into these subjects individually, attain more and more awareness of such things. And perhaps then it doesn't sound as crazy as it did at the beginning, but these two lampposts are absolutely magnificent. Look at that, look at the amount of detail. Archways or horseshoe style magnets. Even the word itself, arch, is synonymous with electricity. <laughs> Even the word arch is synonymous with electricity. Arc, an electrical arc. And again, the detail, the level of detail on this building. You notice the spires there, smaller spires, but just giving you uh, a, good, a good glimpse at how much detail is on the, the bigger spires that are up above. There we have oscillation, right there in the center of the entrance to this building, geometric patterns, horseshoe style magnets. An interesting fact about the parliamentary building, or so they call it, is this building doesn't have any chimneys. So there is no way of heat in the building, except there is. At the time of its construction, this was one of the first uh, major projects undertaken for steam heating. This building has an underground heating system where water is collected from the River Danube and it is heated at a pumping station, a pumping house that is close by and it is pumped all the way through the building to keep it warm throughout the winter. And this system can also be turned to a cooling system to pump cool water around the entire building. Water and magnetism are synonymous with one another. You can electrically charge water as we have with electrolytes. This is really, really good for the body, optimum health. And you can also use water as I've just spoken about in an energetic sense, to heat, to cool, to heal. And that is what this building does, deep down in the foundation levels. So as I was speaking earlier, and I said I wasn't sure whether those spires were copper, this side, with the natural light, we can be certain that they are copper. Every single spire that you see, and all the adjoining, the adjoining uh, roof, terraces area, has a copper lining copper being the excellent conductor of electricity. Give you a zoomed panoramic view of this building right now. Just to the front of the building. I don't know if you can see that the sun is very bright but I just wanted to show you those antennas that are there in the adjacent avenue. What a masterpiece, really it is. Two more lampposts at the front of the structure, incredible amount of detail. Just to give you an idea of how big the building is, that was the side that we've just come from at the front and it still runs all the way around this side huge structure a lot of effort to go to for a parliamentary building or has this building been repurposed is this building older than we are told has this building been here for a long time like many of the old magnificent structures we see within our world and today they are repurposed and reclaimed that is something I will leave up to you to decide and an interesting fact about Budapest, 
is it has a lot of underground tunnels, an incredible amount of underground tunnels, in fact. Just to the other side of the river, there is uh, an area under the castle which stretches for miles and miles and miles, and it even has uh, a hospital under there, which was being used as a hospital. Much of it is closed off to the public, so we don't know the vast um, amount of, of the network which is there. But as I said, adding to the underground pumping system that we have here, the lower levels, the amount of buildings, the architecture, the narrative, which I don't find uh, very plausible, in my opinion, that this was built for Parliament with this amount of detail in the timeline without any assistance from a power source or a better understanding of how things can be built. And that applies to many of the old world structures that we find within our world. They are masterpieces. They have stood the test of time. This building will still be here 500 years from now. And the houses that are built today won't be. Perhaps this is the first time you've heard that buildings could be used for free energy, electromagnetism. If that is so, I have no doubt you would have laughed, maybe chuckled a little, batted it away, said no, not possible. But I hope you've listened to this video and you do a little bit more research in individual subjects and then see what conclusion you draw. Because it is a fact that energy can be harnessed using magnets and not only can it be harnessed but you can create a permanent uh, a permanent field a permanent mechanism that can power all types of things all kinds of things the possibilities are endless with magnetism just to add budapest also has thermal spas which is a well-established fact heal the body the therapeutic uh, temperature the minerals is healing for optimum health and you tie that in with electrically charged water electrolytes and you begin to see the enormous uh, potential of electric within water maybe you're asking how can stone or brick have any form of magnetism associated with it because we can see all of the horseshoe style magnets that's all well and good but how does brick or stone become magnetized and this is where the old world bricks play a very important role in this viewpoint. Inside the old world bricks, there is a mineral which is called magnetite. That word, as you would assume, is because the mineral is the most magnetic mineral known on earth. And this is in the old world bricks. Now, when manipulated a certain way or energized, harnessed, however you want to call it, you can create a permanent magnetic field from that mineral so that the building itself would induce a magnetic field. And that really is a very important part in piecing this all together. So guys, I think this is a good place to wrap this video up. I hope you've enjoyed the little brief tour and would love to know what some of you think about electromagnetism, free energy, and these buildings, perhaps being the old world power stations, Tartaria. Anyway, have a blessed and beautiful day wherever you are. I will see you all soon. Take care of one another and one love to the people. Bonus footage here for you guys, just to show you the same principles on many of the old world buildings. It's amazing what you see when you look at with a fresh perspective.